Hey Barbados, what's up? It's good to be back with you today. It looks like you'll be paying more money for electricity soon, or you may not even be able to take the Barbados Power and Light to court if this new electricity bill really gets passed in Parliament. Let's take a look at that because in the Caribbean, we have sunshine, we have a lot of wind, and I really think it's about time that our governments really invest in the solar generation and then in wind generation for electricity. And we could do it instead of burdening our people with these high expensive bills. In some countries in the Caribbean right now, for instance, in St. Vincent, someone will get a bill for 300 EC dollars, but the fuel surcharge is over 500 Eastern Caribbean dollars. It's just terrible and it's about time we really invest in the renewable energy and the things that we say could save our planet based on all the talking that we're doing about that. As new electricity bill threat to transparency and public oversight, and this is in Barbados, and says consumer advocate Tracy Watson has raised serious concerns about the newly tabled electricity supply bill, warning that it could undermine transparency and in public involvement in the regulation of the Barbados light and Power Company Limited. And those of you in Barbados, you're gonna to have to let me know what it's like with electricity bills right now, and what you think that the government should be doing to reduce the cost of electricity on the island. He says on Wednesday, two days before the bill heads to the Senate, the former opposition Senator warned that it will eliminate the role of interveners in future electricity generation licensing cases. Now, this is very, very important. Who is an intervener? If you take uh, Barbados Light and Power to court because you feel they're ripping you off, someone could actually come, maybe your neighbor, and intervene in that matter and join in that case with you because they also have a grievance. What she's basically saying is this could eliminate the role of interveners in the future. All right, so this is a serious matter. The bill gets rid of interveners, she said in a press release, suggesting it would significantly limit public oversight. So you won't even have a way of questioning what they're charging you, what they're doing. Watson accused the government of moving ahead with legislation without sufficient public consultation. And here we go again with this issue of governments in the Caribbean doing things without sufficient public consultation. It appears that all across the Caribbean, these governments are becoming more and more tyrannical, like they're just doing stuff. You, you elect them to office and you expect that if something is going on, that they would be coming to you and telling you what's taking place or getting your opinion before they do certain things, but they're becoming very tyrannical, I notice, in the Caribbean. She emphasized the significance of the power industry, where she said it's valued at $4 billion annually and criticized what she described as ongoing unjustified electricity price increases. Well, all across the Caribbean, that is what is happening. And they're saying, look, the war in Ukraine, this is happening there, this is happening there, and we are importing the fuel, so we just have to rack up the cost. No, you don't just have to rack up the cost. There are things you can do. If every Monday morning you're preaching about climate change, what are the things that you're doing in terms of sustainable renewable energy to deal with the climate change issue? The Mia Monthly Administration has tabled a new electricity supply bill 2024 without any notice to the voters and consumers of Barbados. What's said in a statement that is a dangerous thing. This development will not come as a surprise to Barbadians, whom I have urged to be vigilant and to pay close attention to what has been happening in our energy sector for the past few years. And all that regular Barbadians are seeing is electricity price increases. Well, it appears it's happening all over the Caribbean where consumers are just paying to their feet. And even if they don't, they have to, or they just simply cut them off. It's getting terrible. And because of the heat, there's little rain, you know, countries that have, like St. Vincent, I believe, um, St. like countries like St. Vincent, um, I think Dominica, Grenada, maybe to a less extent, prices are still going through the roof. Like I said to you, I have had complaints from St. Vincent where people would get electricity bills for $300, yet their fuel surcharge is $549, $550. is just terrible. The companies can actually calculate how much money they're ripping off from you before your bill even comes because they're setting the price of the fuel surcharge. And it is just terrible. Watson, a lawyer who has previously acted as an intervener in cases involving proposed rate hikes by light and power, stressed the importance of the intervener's role in protecting consumers. She cited past efforts where interveners demonstrated that the company's requested rate increase was not justified. So, so if this bill passes, it means that it, the day of interveners have ended, right? 
and that is detrimental to the people of Barbados. Interveners proved that the rate increase was not justified, she said, because of the work of interveners, evidence started to come out that showed that the case was by no means a slam dunk, that the light and power had been making it out to be. Watson also highlighted concerns over money from light and power self-insurance fund being used to pay dividends to its Canadian parent company, Emera. According to her, these actions were only uncovered through the efforts of interveners. So hence the reason why you need interveners. And if the bid is going to eliminate that, then you have a body that is just doing whatever it wants to, charge you whatever it wants to, and cannot be held accountable. And so anywhere you see people like Emera, there's problems. It's actually, it's looking to get involved in the geothermal project in St. Vincent that, that failed at one point in time and they're trying to resurrect it. But then you see these companies, you know what's going down. Further critique in the bill, Watson said it failed to establish clear procedures for reviewing power supply license applications, claiming it grants sweeping unfettered powers to the minister who, as an unelected member of cabinet currently, does not even have to face the electorate. I mean, I tell you, this is crazy what's going on in Barbados. Watson also questioned the transparency surrounding electricity license, asserting that while terms have been shared with foreign entities, Barbadians have been left uninformed. Well, Watson, Barbados is not alone, apparently. Every Caribbean country where these things are going on, people don't even know the deals that the governments are signing with foreign entities. All they're hearing, look, it's going to be good for society. It's going to be good for you. But to tell you what is in the deal, no one knows until it comes crashing down. So be careful. We have no idea what such terms and conditions are, nor what the minister considers appropriate, she said. There is no transparency, no accountability, no integrity, no justice in this. She called on the public to demand greater openness from the government. We have the voters and electricity rate payers have little choice or voice in what this 30 to 0 government passes. And that is the issue when you have really no opposition. And when I say no opposition, I'm talking about opposition in parliament in terms of the numbers. Even if people just present as opposition because the law requires to be there, even when you don't have an opposition that want a seat, unless they have the public galvanized behind them where they can take the government to task in the public square. So Barbados, keep your eye on this one. Look out, see what's happening. And let me know what's taking place in the comment section below. What are the rates like? What do you think government can do? Do you think uh, Watson has a point? And do you think that the public should demand greater openness from the government of Barbados? And as always, like, share, and subscribe to this channel as we continue to give you even more great content.